Hey everyone, Cody from Mac Telecom Networks. Earlier this morning, Ubiquity released Unify Network Application 8.0.7. This is currently a release candidate, so keep that in mind before you do upgrade. They have rolled back a few release candidates recently due to some bug issues. I do now have my UDM SE updated to the 8.0.7, and as you can see, there is quite a lot of new improvements. The list just goes on and on. But instead of us just reading this list, I'm gonna go into my UDM SE and show you where to find these things. Obviously you could tell I'm not at home right now. We are in Hawaii, so I am in the hotel room. So it may look a little different. The light's not gonna be as good as well as the microphone. The first new change in this update is the radio manager. On the left-hand side in our Unify network controller, you can see where it says radios. Here at the top, we could filter between different access points. I only have two access points in my house right now, but if you click the drop down menu, you could choose the in wall or the enterprise. We're just gonna select all of them for now. Below that, we could see the different SSIDs that I currently have configured. So we have my camera network, we have Dolores, which is my IoT, and then we have the kitty sitter, which is for the people who are currently watching our cats back home. We could click create new, and this is just gonna bring us to the Wi-Fi settings page to create a new SSID. Down below, we could see our access points and which bands they're using. So we have our 2.4, the five, and the six gigahertz, as these are the enterprise access points. What's really nice about this, we could toggle different settings. If we only want to see the 2.4, we could click on that, or if we only want to see the 6 gigahertz. Something else that's really nice is we could do a bulk edit. So if I select all the devices, you're going to see it pop up. We have edit radios, and you can see on the 2.4, it's for both of my access points. We could change the channel width, the transmit power, and the channel that they're going to be on. This is kind of the same as that Wi-Fi global config, but now we could select individual access points. Now the next new update is the port manager and how we could use it. It looks a lot better. We could see ports at the top and then on the left hand side there is also ports. This is going to allow us to see all our ports within our network or just a specific switch. Currently, every single port is showing here, even if it's not connecting. And if we scroll down, you'd see that I have 93 ports that are recorded. Now let's just switch to an individual switch. We'll go down and go to my USW Enterprise 24 PoE. With this new update, we're able to do a whole bunch of different filters. We could do just showing in-use ports, and that's just gonna show us what's currently connected to the network. We could do available ports, and that's gonna show us what we could use. We could see non-PoE ports, PoE, PoE+, plus, PoE++, plus plus, pass-through, fast Ethernet gigabit, 2.5, 10 gigabit, SFP+, plus, and SFP28. So this is really giving us a bunch of options to look at our ports. Now another update within the port manager is how we view our VLANs. We can see the VLAN settings up here, and then if we look at it, it is totally redesigned. We can see that our native VLAN is VLAN 1, and then all of our tag VLANs are below. We could just scroll down and you can see that I have a whole bunch of different VLANs. Now you can see on port 19 and port 20, our native VLAN is something different. We have this on our IoT network and then we have this one on the camera network. I'll do a whole separate video on how the port profiles work later on. Another new feature that came in this update was the ability to have WireGuard as a client. You could see that we already had OpenVPN and I'm running NordVPN through OpenVPN and I will do another video on the WireGuard, but this is now an option and I'm glad they put it in. Now, I don't have any cloud keys or cloud controllers that are currently running this version, but they do have a new site overview. So if you click over the network, you're gonna see all your different sites. Here we could see Chicago, London, New York, Paris. We're gonna see critical alerts, devices, and uptime. We'll also see networks, Wi-Fi networks, and wired and guests that are on that. So that's pretty cool and I will look at that eventually. Now another nice quality of life feature for the clients in our change log, they've added a whole bunch more detail. You'd see that this Galaxy connected to Dolores on access point Wi-Fi enterprise in wall and we could also see the connection information. So it's on channel 11, 2.4 gigahertz, 20 megahertz at minus 41 dBm. This is really going to help when we have to do some troubleshooting. There's been a couple changes under the security. We now have the ability to tell the IDS or the IPS system of what network to run over. It used to be that it ran globally, so it would do every single network that you had configured. But you can see here, this is where our IDS and IPS would be set. And you can see right here under suspicious activity, we have advanced and then we have all of our networks showing. Currently, I have everything running in that, but if you wanted to delete one, 
from the IDS IPS solution, you just click on the X. Now, something else that is nice, we're able to view the predefined firewall rules. So before we were never able to click on these. So now I could click on it and it's gonna open up and show us what was done. So this allows packets from the internet that are a reply to traffic sent from the clients behind the unified gateway. We still can't edit these, but at least we could see what they're doing. They've also made a whole bunch of UX changes. We could see under our Wi-Fi, we have this radio showing up and it will bring us to the radio manager and we have the channelization, which we could optimize now. If we click under our networks, it's gonna be the same thing. We have new virtual network or we have the VLAN viewer, which will bring us back to the VLAN page. Under our settings, they've also added this new professional installer check off. If we click over the I icon, it says certified that I am a professional installer of wireless equipment and grant permission to adjust advanced settings such as attend a gain. So if you want that on, you need to check it off in the settings menu. Now there's a lot of different bug fixes and improvements that we didn't go over in this video. So I will leave a link to the community notes down below. If you like this video, hit the thumbs up button. If you're new here, please subscribe and hit the bell icon. All right. Thanks.